easy doing this. It, you know, this is a full-time job, okay? Now, let's get started. Now, since 2017, y'all, like, let's be real here for a second. Since 2017, we had started seeing a decline in Wendy Williams' health. Like, you know, it all it really started when we saw her drop to the floor in that um in that Lib Statue of Liberty, you know, costume for Halloween on her show. That's when we really started to see something was off. And then it just really started to derail from there. And, you know, eventually and subsequently she ended up getting, you know, pulled out of the show because of health reasons. And then Sherry Shepard ended up taking the show on. And then after that, you know, the show just subsequently ended up getting canceled and ending. And now we have the Sherry Shepard show. But after all of that was said and done, we really saw wendy williams health take a nosedive and we really started to wonder what was going on some people were claiming that you know it was alcohol that had her you know really going insane like that some people were claiming that you know it was it was drugs that she was using you know some people were claiming that you know that she just might be bipolar you know it could be could be effects of the graves disease it could be all of these things you know right but they released a documentary trailer on Lifetime, right? And we watched it. We watched it. And what I concluded from it was that, you know, it seemed to me that Wendy Williams was developing either Alzheimer's or some form of dementia, and they probably were not ready to tell the public, right? Not to mention, Wendy Williams had made it a point to let us know plenty of times that she was not able to get access into her money because, uh, you know, the Guardian would not let her in because, you know, they felt that Wendy Williams was not competent, you know, competent enough to know what she was doing with her money. And I was thinking in my mind, even back then, what would have somebody you know, feeling that you're not competent enough to take care of yourself. It either had to be she was, you know, mentally on a decline as in, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's or some type of, you know, brain degenerative disorder, or it could have been, you know, maybe they couldn't trust her because, you know, drug, drug habits or something like that that's taking a hold of her or whatever the case may be. I don't know because, you know, they did Britney like that and ain't nothing wrong with Britney. I think, but we hold on. Uh, so no. All right, so let's read this people's article, and then I'll get into what I have to say. Okay, y'all. So I'm gonna share the screen like I usually do. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen, and we're gonna read this off, and I'm gonna need y'all to act like y'all got some sense. Okay, while we read this, because this is a sad occasion. We don't laugh at misfortune, y'all. We don't do that. Okay, let, you know, let's act like we got some sense. All right. Now, so this is coming from CBS News. It says, Wendy Williams. Hold on, child. Let me make sure I'm, I'm sharing, because y'all already know I'll be forgetting. Look, I'm all right. Look, I'm already getting better. I'm already getting better. Look, I already remembered that I that I'll be forgetting to bring it up on y'all. Okay, so Wendy Williams diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and front and frontotemporal dementia. Oof, y'all say that three times. Mm. Poor Wendy. So it said, hold on, let me exit out of these out of these ads. So it says Wendy Williams has been diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal temporal dementia. Williams had taken a leave from her talk show in 2021 while she dealt with health issues. And in 2023, after un undergoing a battery of medical tests, she was diagnosed with conditions which affect language, communication behavior, and function, according to a news release. When Williams, 59, had been open to the public about her Graves disease and lymphedema diagnosis. She initially took an indefinite leave like y'all damn so she got graves disease lymphedema aphasia and dementia yikes i just just pray <laughs> prayers for wendy like this is a lot oh my god y'all 
Like that, like that's like four major diseases, or like, my God, whoo, child. She initially took an indefinite leave from her long-running talk show, Wendy, which premiered in 2008. In 2022, it was announced that Sherry Shepard would take over her show as host. I want to say I have an immense gratitude for the love and kind words I have received after sharing my diagnosis of aphasia and frontoral, frontotemporal dementia, FTD. Okay, so let's just call it that for now. Let me say, wow, your response has been overwhelming. The messages shared with me have touched me, reminding me of the power of unity and the need for compassion, William said in a statement released Friday evening. I continue to need personal space and peace to thrive. Please just know that your positivity and encouragement are deeply appreciated. Okay, so William's care team shared the health update on Thursday to correct inaccurate and hurtful rumors about her health. She was on occasion seen unable to form words and acted erratically, including during tapings of her talk show, which left many fans concerned and confused. So they've been so they're late. So they basically saying that she's been showing this stuff since, you know, 2017 you know 2021 probably you know so she been on the show with you know with you know with symptoms of aphasia and frontotemporal dementia and they just let her continue to show on and like nobody's nobody thought you know let's stop this like we like maybe we need to like you know put a halt on it you know why so we just going to wait until she just beyond you know beyond help like to like okay i'm sorry y'all what is a facia a facia leaves patients struggling to understand language and communicate the condition gained wide, widespread attach, uh, attention when actor Bruce Willis revealed his diagnosis in 2022. He later revealed that he was also diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. Oh, so I wonder if, you know, aphasia is also partnered with frontotemporal dementia, you know, when you get it. Like, one of them is like a, a branch of the other one. Like, if you get one, you're going to automatically get the other. Because that's quite, that you know, that's quite a coincidence that they both have it, you know. Aphasia is related to damage on the left side of your brain and is usually a symptom of other medical issues like stroke, head injury, or tumor, or develops due to a degenerative brain condition, according to Mayo Clinic. Now, what is frontotemporal dementia? Frontotemporal dementia, also known as FTD, describes a group of brain disorders that affect the brain's frontal and temporal lobes, which are located with personality, behavior, and language. Some people with FTD show dramatic changes in their personality and can be and can become socially in, um, inappropriate, impulsive, or emotionally indifferent while others lose the ability to to use language properly oh my gosh and y'all remember if i'm not mistaken they said you remember when like the the panorama was going on and people were saying that that wendy williams was allegedly playing with a coochie on like you know on the on the on the google chat or the google meets or the or the what do you call it the zooms and you know it, it, it's kind of like, you know, making me think of that. So oftentimes, patients can just present the behavioral problems. Their personality can change. Dr. Gayatri Devi, a clinical pro, uh, professor of neurology at Northwell um, Health, who specializes in dementia, explained on CBS Mornings. But as opposed to something like Alzheimer's, there's no clear test to definitiv definitively make the diagnosis. It tends to affect people in their 50s and 60s as opposed to Alzheimer's, which generally emerges at older ages but there is okay y'all and like so i just want to ask y'all a question real quick so this is this is my question so she been exhibiting signs of frontotemporal dementia and aphasia since 2000 and let's say roughly 2020 2017 at the at the earliest we can say that 
how the hell did she did she, was she able to like manage all of this all up until this point how and i and and if she be and if she's become so whittled down in her you know in her functions to where you know she's even having a hard time you know speaking how in the hell did wendy williams manage to sign off and executively produce a documentary not only that how the hell did wendy williams hire a whole team of people and representatives well, how did these people get in contact with Wendy? Because when we watched when we watched the documentary, Wendy didn't even know where the hell she was at. Wendy said or Wendy said herself that she didn't even know where she was. She was in a car just ride. She didn't know if she was here, there, everywhere. She didn't know. So my question is, is how did Wendy get there? How did Wendy hire these people? And if she has a fascia, in front of temporal dementia, how the hell did she sign off and executively produce a documentary? That's what I want to know. How did how did this come about? And then, and then y'all was really making me so confused. Was confusing me in my home grace down like you know down at the Bella Noches. Was confusing me in my home grace. Hold on, let me show y'all what I'm talking about. Because this is also confusing me. Hold on, y'all. I'm pulling it up. Now, Wendy, now Wendy Williams just executively produced a documentary called Where is Wendy? Basically, Wendy executively producing this and asking us where she's at. So this is so much confusion when it comes to this documentary because I'm saying if Wendy don't know where she's at and we saw that actively in like in what was going on and the family don't know where she's at and Wendy is executively producing this this documentary. how in the hell did it even come together was like did like did wendy williams bring ask her family to come on to the documentary while she executively produced it and then talk to them and they was wondering where she was at like i'm saying like how did all of this come together like how are you executively producing a documentary while battling aphasia and dementia basically you know like you know whittling your your brain activity to where you can't even make cognitive you know functions anymore at this point and your family is on said documentary wondering where you're at and not even being able to contact you how did who contacted the family who okayed the family to be even a part of this and then this is my next question y'all so if wendy williams can't get in contact with the money can't get in her bank account because she has aphasia and frontotemporal dementia and she has a guardian how the hell does she have a guardian and she did this whole documentary and i know y'all are saying well jeremy why why on earth can't wendy do a documentary it because she got frontotemporal dementia why can't Wendy do a documentary even though that she has a facia? Why can't Wendy sign off on the documentary? It's because Wendy Williams has a guardianship. And the woman over the guardianship is suing Lifetime for the documentary that Wendy Williams executively produced while she battled a facial and frontotemporal dementia. I don't get it. I don't get it, but we're going to read about it. And I got some questions for you, Miss Morrissey. Where have you been this whole time? So let's read it. <clears throat> and this is coming from TMZ. So it says, Wendy Williams, Guardian, Wendy Williams Guardian just filed a lawsuit against Lifetime's parent company. 
and the timing is nothing short of suspicious because there's a doc a, uh, a doc about her from them coming out a woman named sabrina morrissey who says she's acting in her capacity as temporary guardian of wwh presumably presumably wendy williams hunter just filed a lawsuit against a and e television networks but she but she did it under seal meaning the public can't peep exactly what she's running to court for in the docs obtained by tmz there are a few clues that could indicate what this might be about and all signs seem to point to some connection with the where is wendy williams part two documentary now look this is my i'm still trying to figure out why why wendy is making a documentary asking where she's at and her family want to know where she's at. She want to know where she's at, but somehow she produced this. I want to know. I just want to know how that worked. But okay, let's continue. Dropping Saturday. Morrissey is also seeking a temporary restraining order in her action. Again, that's often the mechanism used when someone wants a judge to step in and halt the release of a film or television project. Considering the doc's release date is just a couple of days away, that would make sense, although it's impossible to tell for sure with the docs being under seal. Now, what's interesting in the docs here that the judge actually ordered all the docs to remain temporarily under seal and set a hearing date for next week to determine whether they should stay that way as the case plays out. Of course, the Wendy William doc drops this weekend. And while the hearing on the ceiling issue falls after the release date, it's possible the court will rule on the merits of what um, of what Morrissey's asking for, namely injunctive relief against A and E. While the docs are temporarily sealed, no word yet on a ruling on that front. We've reached out to Morrissey and A and E for comment. No words back from her yet, but A and E told us they ain't got no comment. Now, Miss Now Miss Sabrina Morrissey, we got some questions for you, ma'am. We got some questions for you, ma'am. If you the if you the guardian, hold on, y'all. Let me let me scoot let me scoot this let me scoot this over, y'all. If you the guardian, like you said that you are, and you're guardian guardianing, you know Wendy Williams' estate, you know for her safety and you know to protect her. How the hell didn't you know that she was making a documentary, huh? Since you got your fancy degrees and you know every damn thing, how didn't you know that? What exactly are you guarding? Because the show damn can't be Wendy. It can't be, you, you show damn ain't guarding Wendy because how the hell are you suing a documentary that's been made about Wendy Williams' life that she executive, executively produced and you feel offended by it? But you are her guardian. Did you not have any idea that she was doing this? This makes me wonder, do you even talk to Wendy? do you even communicate with wendy do like how often do you hear from this woman you telling me you did not know at all that this woman was literally making this documentary and that your name was going to be brought up in it and now you're suing them but the person who made the documentary that you're suing them for you're guarding them how does that work so it seems to me that you only thinking about the money and my question is what the fuck are we protecting wendy from can we cannot can like cannot cannot can can we all ask that as a people what exactly are we protecting wendy from that's my question because is it is it like you know it can't be it can't like it can't be because y'all y'all are worried about her money because for some somehow Wendy Williams is able to pay a whole staff. Wendy Williams got a manager. Wendy Williams have a publicist. Wendy Williams got all of these all of these people working in her camp, but Wendy ain't got no access to the money. But somehow you do to pay yourself, Miss Sabrina Morrissey. Because how else are you getting paid for this? Because I know damn well it ain't by no company. You ain't working for no damn company to do this. So are you paying yourself with Wendy Williams' money a salary? And then how are these other people getting paid? that working that's working for wendy williams that's what i want to know how is that working 
And then, so all it is, so all it is to stop the family from using the money. But how are the, but, but my, my, my question is, so why on earth, why on earth is Wendy Williams still able to pay people, you know, to do things that they're not qualified to do and you're the guardian? So it's only it's all of y'all can take Wendy Williams money, but her family can't use that money. Is that what it's all about? And another thing, why are y'all hiding Wendy? They say Wendy has been in a rehabilitation center since April 2023. Bi bitch, 2023. Bitch, it's February 2024. That's 10 months. Nobody has talked to Wendy. Nobody has heard from Wendy. Nobody has seen Wendy. But somehow through all of this, Wendy Williams was able to create a documentary that you had no idea about. So was Wendy Williams in this facility when she was making the documentary? Were you not, are you not in communication with Wendy? What are you guarding? Because it can't be Wendy because you don't know a damn thing that Wendy Williams got going on. Wendy Williams was literally freaking out inside of a car because she didn't know where she was going and didn't even know what she was. And where the fuck was her guardian? Sabrina, it seems that only the only thing Sabrina is doing is making sure that Wendy Williams, Wendy Williams' family, Wendy Williams' son is not able to contact her, is not able to, is not able to get any money to see Wendy. And my question is, is Wendy in duress? Is Wendy safe? Is Wendy in good hands? Because my question comes into, comes into play when I think about the fact that nobody has seen this woman you obviously are not properly taking care of her because you don't even know that she did a fucking documentary and that she signed off on said documentary although she has frontal temporal dementia and aphasia so wendy williams can't read write barely speak she can't really walk that well she can't really ex like really you know she can't really communicate She's like, she's definitely, you know, having degenerative, you know, issues with her brain functions, but somehow she managed to, to executively produce a whole documentary that you didn't know anything about. Meanwhile, you're her guardian. Are you actually even helping her? Are you actually around? Where is, what, what qualification does she have? What, like, where did she come from? Can we get more information on Sabrina Morrissey? Am, am, am like you know am i the only one that's that's asking these questions and then my question is you like so if wendy williams so wendy williams is battling frontal temporal dementia wendy williams wendy williams is battling aphasia Wendy Williams is battling Graves disease. Wendy Williams is battling alcoholism, allegedly. Wendy Williams is battling what, like lymphedema, all of these things. And my question is like, you guarding, you doing a guardianship, but when she passes, doesn't all of that, doesn't her estate go to her son anyway automatically? Isn't that a thing? So what are you exactly halting anyway? Because at the end of the day, if something did happen to Wendy, it would go to the sun anyway. But my thing is this, like, are we, are we getting people that are actively looking at where the money is going? How much of the money is getting spent per month? How much of the money is being saved? Is it getting burnt through? Is it getting reinvested to become bigger? Is it just being, is it just staying there? How is Wendy paying this whole team of people that are not qualified to do any of the damn things that they're doing right now? How did Wendy, how did Wendy, you know, get able to, you know, to, to make a whole documentary how the hell are you her guardian but suing the documentary that she made about her life because you feel offended by it but my question is if you were really a guardian how the fuck didn't you know that she was doing this how did she even you should have been the one signing off on this if you were the damn guardian 
I'm confused. Where, where is Wendy? Where is Wendy? I told y'all, I think that they got Wendy locked up in the closet somewhere. Where is Wendy, Sabrina? When, I, I think, I think low key, and this is just me, and I'ma just say it. I'ma say it and I'ma take it back. I'ma say it and I'ma take it back. Shout out to Heaven. <laughs> You know, and this is all, this is all alleged. I'm alleged, you alleged, she alleged, we all alleged. Okay, I'm just going to say it. I feel that Sabrina Morrissey and Wendy team and representatives are all in this together. I feel, I feel that, you know, Sabrina Morrissey was cool with the people surrounding Wendy Williams is because they were able to keep her separated from her family, you know, people that really care about her and her well-being and her safety. And basically, and you know, basically, she was, I feel like Sabrina was like, you know what, like, hey, y'all, like, I'll pay y'all, y'all, I'll pay, I'll keep knocking y'all off some bread. Y'all could just keep her, like, you know, keep her at bay and, you know, keep her surrounded and keep her, you know, excluded from her family. I'm going to pay y'all and I'm going to pay myself and we can all get this bread. But greed don't just lie there. I feel that what happened next was the, you know, the, the people that are surrounded with Wendy Williams want more money. So they made this they made this documentary to not only show Wendy Williams real predicament that she's in right now but to also exploit her get money off of it as they have, they're going to have to you know split you know she's going to have to pay them percentages all on this you know you know the manager going to have to get a percentage somebody going to have to get a percentage because somebody helped make this happen right then they're going to make Sabrina Morrissey look like a villain and put her into question what she's doing and then that's going to probably get some type of investigation going on to where they'll have to transfer the power of you know the power of the guardianship probably to the family or to somebody in the team and it's all a battle over wendy williams money and estate but none of y'all actually give a damn about wendy and that's sad but it don't, it don't just stop there, y'all. It get worse. So, so, Wendy Williams, so Wendy Williams' niece. Now, my question is, where the hell the niece been this whole time? It's so strange how you motherfuckers just be popping out of the woodworks when bitches get sick. But y'all never there, even before that. Where was you beforehand? Why now are you showing up and talking? Wendy Williams struggled to comprehend the talk show cancellation, niece says. It took a little bit of convincing. So basically, the niece is basically telling us that Wendy Williams couldn't comprehend or really understand that her show had ended. She needed some convincing. But you are the same one telling us that Wendy Williams said that she needed this documentary to come out so she could be in control of her own story. I don't know, y'all. I don't know who to believe. I don't know if Sabrina Morrissey is the one I should be believing. I don't know if the team is who I should be believing. I don't know if the family is who I should be believing. I don't know. And I damn sure can't believe Wendy because Wendy Williams don't even know where she's at, literally. The, the, the title of the documentary lets us know. Wendy Williams don't even know where she at, who she is. So my question is, is who is taking advantage of Wendy? Who is exploiting Wendy? Damn it. So Wendy Williams didn't understand, didn't initially understand her talk show, y'all. Her talk show was canceled, according to her family. Williams' niece, Alex Feeney, recounted the moment she explained to her aunt that the Wendy Williams show had been removed from air. I got serious and I said, I want to really explain something to you so that you can get this. Finney said in the conversation with CNN, there's no more Wendy Williams show. They decided to cancel it. After so many fabulous seasons, this curtain has come down. That, y'all, I'm sorry, but that don't even sound like a nice ass way of even saying that shit. Like, I'm saying you see that she has frontal temporal dementia and aphasia 
And that's the way you're going to explain it. It kind of sounds a little bit backhanded and condescending. You know, I like I can just hear her saying, I want to really explain something to you so that you get that so so that you can get this. There's no more Wendy Williams show. They decided to cancel it after so many fabulous seasons. The curtain has finally come down. Like I that's not even like no nice way of even saying it. And I'm saying, why is she the one who got to explain to Wendy Williams? And my question is, so now, so, so you were around Wendy when, you know, when she couldn't even comprehend the fact that her show was ending, but now somehow you don't have communication with Wendy Williams. But y'all saw back then that she was that she was definitely in duress but no but like my question is where were the family at that point if the family were able to be around her at this point where her show where her show was like you know getting canceled where is the family now and how did y'all get separate from her who entered the team who hired the team how did they even hire a team if she has a guardianship that is basically stopping all her funds how is like who's paying the team to keep wendy away from her family is it sabrina but if but if the team is okaying the like the documentary then how is sabrina suing them doesn't she know because she the guard y'all this is so confusing to me how is this working? Am I the only one confused? Hold on, y'all. It's cold as hell in here. And my nose is kind of running. So I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand. So that was enough. That wasn't enough to help. So that wasn't enough you know for her to comprehend a decision over which the host had no sway i remember her saying what are you talking about of course i have the show finney said adding it took a little bit of convincing and conversations with the powers that be from her show for her to really understand that her show is no more y'all this is really sad this is a really nice picture of wendy though no, this was in 2019. Wow, like y'all, this is like this is really sad. Like, and I'm not the biggest fan of Wendy. I'm really not. Like, you know, I didn't really like Wendy Williams growing up because like I felt like she used to just come at everybody and stuff like that. But y'all, this is this is this is just really sad. Can you imagine your your health declining? You basically having a like a a certain you know you know one foot you know knocking at the door you know if you get what i'm saying and you can't have you don't know if you can trust your family you don't know if you have any real friends you can't trust your colleagues you can't trust your team you can't even trust the person that's that you know that's over you you're secluded you're by yourself you're losing you're losing touch with reality and is nothing you can do about it. Sumerian, I, I don't look, I just I, look, I think we really need to, to, to really take this seriously. I ain't saying that you're not. I'm just saying, like, this is really sad. Like, I don't really think that there's an LOL to this. I don't think this is funny. Like, this is really sad to me. Wendy Williams show aired third, like y'all. Like, look, I saw another, like, you know, y'all, I, I ain't trying to get emotional because, because, you know, I'm whore, I'm whore like that, but y'all, I saw the scene with Wendy and Black China, or as y'all, you know, compassionately called her White China, you know, affectionately. And when, you know, when Wendy was like, I am Wendy Hunter or like Wendy Williams. I'm not Hunter. I'm by myself. And she like, and Black China was like, yeah, you are. You're Win like, y'all, my heart was breaking. It like, it, it, 
because I'm just because like and this is y'all and this is no way a read. <clears throat> this is no way. This is no way a. This is no way any disrespect to Black China, but y'all, can you imagine how lonely and how secluded you must be to have to consider Black China your family or like a daughter? Like you can't, like you can't talk to your family. You can't talk to your friends. You got to talk to Black China. Like it's the fact that Black China was the one hugging her. Meanwhile, Wendy Williams ain't even able to see her son. How that work? I think Wendy Wendy would be making fun if it wasn't her. Honestly, the thing of, the thing about it is is that is that like we don't know for certain if that's true or not. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, I don't revel in other people's you know um, in other people's pain and misfortune. That's not something that I do. So even though Wendy Williams did have a habit. Of you know you know roasting and toasting the girls and really you know making fun of their misfortune, I don't think I don't I don't want to do that to her. I'm not I'm look Jeremy speaks is not Wendy Williams karma. I'm not her karma, y'all. <laughs> I'm not her karmic response. I'm not okay, but I'm just saying like I just don't have the I don't have the heart to do that because this is this is very sad. This is this is very sad, y'all. This is very sad. On Thursday, Wendy Williams, um, Wendy Williams care team announced the form. So wait, it's a care team. So is her team team and the care team different? So can a care team decide to make decide to make statements on your behalf? Like I thought a care team was like the people who like clean your like wipe your butt, you know, you know, change your bras, you know, give you a bath, you know, make sure your health is good. Are they able to like do that? Care team? Is the care team the same as a regular team? Or is it two different teams? Or do or do they just have like, you know, duo efficiency in both things? They can manage, they can like, you know, they can do publicist work, they can do, you know, nurse work. They like they also license practitioner nurses. You know, management, they also have a degree in business. Like, how does this work? The care team making statements? It was the first time Black China tried to reinvent herself a few years back. Y'all, how old is this documentary? Oh, so wait. So wait, is it possible this documentary is like years old or, or older or older, you know, footage like from years ago? Or is this like recent within like the last year? It was around the time, the it was around the time, it was around the time Black China first tried to reinvent herself. When was that? You know, you mean when she gave her life over to God? I mean, Angela still still seemed like she giving her life over to God. Well, look at White China's relationship with her mom. She knows pain as well. She is probably very sweet and loving to others. That is possibly that you know that's a possibility. That's a possibility, y'all. So, so what y'all are saying is that this Antonio Smith does does he have access? Child, y'all work be killing me. They like ugh. well, look at okay, so. So this is so this is my so this is my thing. Is like is is Wendy Williams gonna make money off of this? And if and if it and if she does, and if Wendy Williams does make money off of this, is it just gonna go to the Guardian? Or is Wendy Williams trying to make money aside from the guardianship? To like, so she has her own money. So like, do y'all get what I'm saying? So I'm saying like when it like after you know with this documentary and it's raking in all of this money because it's going to make a lot of views because all of us are talking about it right so the next question goes in to 
whether the money is going straight to Wendy Williams or is it going into the guardianship? Or is it the fact that the guardian is not making anything or is not able to have control of the funds of this documentary that she's suing on behalf of herself? Y'all, did I, did, I, did I just connect it? Did I just connect it? Did I just connect it? Huh? Let me know if I let me know. Let, you know, let me know if I got it right. Let me know. Let me know, y'all. Let me know. Y'all, you this documentary was not taken in 2019. It couldn't have been. Did like this this footage is not from 2019. We saw Wendy in 2019 by her damn self. This can't be around the time when that happened. No, this has to be like last year. When, 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 you know, Black China gave her life over to God. If she was able to make some money, it would probably be under the name of a family or a different business not associated with Wendy. So, so, so that, so it's probably the fact that she's not making any money off of it. Or, you know, it's not going into Wendy's bank account necessarily. I don't know who to trust, y'all. I don't know. Is it, is it Sabrina Morrissey? Is it like, you know, who is it? But y'all, listen, we're going to have to move on from Wendy Williams. I'm going to pray for her. You know, uh, let me know if y'all going to tune in to the, uh, to the what's, it, what's it called? To, to, to the documentary, Where's Wendy? You know, Wendy, where's Wendy Williams premiering on a Saturday night on Lifetime at, you know, some, some, some central or whatever the case. It's always a damn central time. They always say some, some, some central. They ain't having the Eastern Standard Time or Pacific Time. It's always some, some central. And like, I can't stand that. What about us? What about us, you know, Eastern Standard Time hoes? We, we, like, we, we want to be shouted out too, you know, in the, in the documentary announcements. It's always you stand, you like you central standard time, bitches. Anyway, like I said, we we gonna move on from this. Much prayers for Wendy. She gonna be in my prayers. I hope for Wendy Williams. You know, uh, I hope that she, somehow she can make a she can make a a recovery that she's able to fully, you know, come into herself and really, you know, you know, be her old self again, and that her health will be on the incline. You know, uh. Much prayers and, you know, all of that for Wendy Williams, child, you know. I hope the best for her. Y'all, time stamp, time stamp this. Time stamp the Wendy Williams segment. Let me know what y'all got. Time stamp the Wendy Williams segment, okay? All right.